Maniacs through. I've been around a long time. We've been through hell and back again together. But I gotta say, I've never had the wool pulled over my eyes quite like this time. With aces and eights, they fooled myself, my family, Sting, and everybody in TNA, brother. And when I think about the massacre last week, when I sent the whole roster out here, the way aces and eights overrode every single man that came in this ring, it made me realize that this is a monster. And this is not just a battle. This is a war of survival. Out of all the men that were left laying in this ring last week, the four guys that led the charge are the Warriors men. The four guys that took the bull by the horn and came out here are the men that I love and respect. And they lead the rest of the pack in the back, Jack. So at this time, I want nothing but respect for these four men. And I'd like to bring them out here, starting with Samoa Joe. The next man I'd like to bring out here who fought like a true warrior was Magnus. The next man doesn't have a weak bone in his body. He's the scariest man I've ever looked into his eyes. That's the cyborg, Kurt Angle. in the back that led this charge last week. And the reason I brought these four men out here, I need you four to put aces and eights out, and I need the world heavyweight title back in TNA. Which brings me to you, Jeff. You took us to a place I never thought we'd be so quick. But after the shot at lockdown with a hammer, brother, and the beat down last week, I need to know, are you still up for the rematch, brother? Are you 100% and can you pull off? You know what, Hulk, I am. I'm in pretty bad shape. The Bully Ray stole that world title, and we, the creatures, need it back. These men are ready. Just in case I'm not, let's do this tonight, right here. Let's have a four-way match. And whoever wins gets that first shot at Bully Ray. You know something, Jeff Hardy? The last time I picked a number one contender, I made one of the biggest mistakes of my life. So in listening to your words, I love that idea, brother. And tonight, the best man in this ring will become the number one contender. So I'm going to speak your words again because I love that. That puts us right on track with the best man to put in the war zone. Tonight, Jeff Hardy, Magnus, Kurt Angle, and Samoa Joe will be in a four-way. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your host, Ferran Derry. Sit down, shut up, and listen up. One hell of an idea indeed. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. The family feud strike thrown in by Mike Samsel, the producer. I need all you guys on the same page, so here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to have you beat each other up for the most prized possession in our industry. For a shot right. at the most prized possession. All right, got it. Brilliant. That's and a smarter say putting bad, Eric and Bischoff and Hulk Hogan in charge. Yeah, <laughs> there is that. There is that. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, needless to say, Samsel does not approve. I'm not exactly thrilled either. It does seem like a... Plus, if you're Jeff Hardy, you have the title shot. Why do you want to... You already proved that you deserved it. Why do you need to prove it by taking on others in a four-way where you don't even have to lose to lose your, your title shot? Shut up. That's why. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I think that's pretty much how that goes. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's let's clear the lines out, and then we'll uh, we'll get to the uh, to the the um, Heath Slater interview. Uh, let's go ahead and kick things off with uh, Dan, who's calling in from the windy city of Chicago. I don't know, was he the one, were you the one Dan who uh, Bully Ray was uh, dropping the uh, f bombs no. and q bombs at? No, I didn't go to that one. I'm actually going to go to uh, Stream Rules in St. Louis actually uh, after WrestleMania. I'm oh, there you go. That works, so we'll kind of we'll follow in tandem. I'll be at WrestleMania, and you can go to uh, Extreme Rules afterward. I think I'm getting the better end of the deal. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, I got a few things I, I, I want to get off my chest. Um, the first thing is the AJ Styles storyline is staying from 1996 when the NWO first was born. Remember when Sting was up in the rafters doing his thing? This is what AJ is doing now. Yeah, it, it's, it's Sting with a beard. Yeah. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if anybody else thought that, but I'm like, this is just a reboot storyline. Well, they're going a different twist with it. I not mean, they've really. got him at well, they've got him at home as opposed to standing up in the rafters. I mean, right, you, I, you're not, you know, you're I, not I, seeing I, AJ I, Styles like, with the crow paint. Right, right, right. But remember when Sting used to, you know, jump the Cider Brothers from behind? He jumped Shane Storm a little. You know, what I, mean? I hope, I don't know. I hope this doesn't get drawn up for at least, you know two years like they did the same. Well, let me put it this way. If he starts bringing a baseball bat to the ring, I think it's a shoe in that it's pretty much a carbon copy. Right, 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 right. But, uh, yeah, and, I, I mean, I, there are similarities, but, I mean, you, know, you you could say that, you know, certain factions and groups are copies of other factions. I mean, they, they, you can open... You can open Pandora's box with what is a copy of another thing. And it comes when it comes to wrestling storylines. I mean, the Shield is essentially the Nexus, just done correctly. Right, right. right. There you go. <laughs> All right. My second point is Booker T being in the Hall of Fame. I'm gonna. Ooh, I was so angry Monday because there are so many other guys that deserve this Hall of Fame. It's not a Hall of Fame. It's a joke. We all know this. But Hall of Fame, we coming Booker for you? T, Never mind. <laughs> to have Booker T involved in this now, does he deserve it? Yes. But Macho Man deserves it. Uh, Owen Hart deserves it. Rick Rude, you know, we've gone through this over, over the years on who deserves it more than certain other people. Booker T, not now. Well, on the same token, I mean, you have to look for some semblance of longevity. They want to be able to bring people in on an annual basis. So if you put all the superstars out there in one year, then you look to next year and you go, ah, crap, who are we going to induct this year? You know, then, well, then you're going to that mid-level, you know, what what next? is is it, Once he's done with TNA, is D'Lo Brown going to get an induction just for lack of better people? I mean, yeah. I like D'Lo, don't get me wrong, but yeah. he's not a Hall of Famer. I but mean, then you look at Booker T and you kind of go, oh, well, okay. I mean, Booker T doesn't think... I, I don't look at Booker T and think, wow, that's a Hall of Famer. But then no, you look He's at a his, Hall of know. Really Good. He's a Hall of Really Good. I, I just disagree with the... You know, I I disagree with all of them, but I wonder... You know, with some of them, but I understood why, because of the celebrity win of the Hall of Fame. But Booker T right now does nothing. Okay, so what is he in the next couple of years? Is he going to be in it again with Hunter and the Heat? Well, that, that's what I was going to pose to you is if they if they'd announced that Harlem Heat, the tag team, was getting inducted, would you feel similarly? Would you feel differently? No, I would have felt a little bit. I would have felt a little bit better about it, but God, for the first time, I was really, really upset with this. Huh? See, I don't know. I, I look at Booker T, and I, I mean, he. You have to realize there was a long while where he was buried in WCW. 
you know, because he was held behind, you know, Hogan, Sting, Luger, Savage, you know, the, the, the list goes on. Flair, I mean, all, all, the, all the retreads from the 80s were keeping, you know, keeping him down during, like, the, the prime of his career, and he was just kind of saddled there in the tag ranks, and in that case, in April of 97, get, letting his mouth get him into trouble. What about, what, what about JBL? He deserves it way before Booker T. I don't know about that. Uh, to me, I, see JBL, I mean, they're, yeah, they're they're very similar. Yeah, they're both getting in, but again, JBL strikes me as a guy who's you know the hall of really good. I, I don't, I don't think there was anything that was ever great about Booker T. I never thought. Oh. What when you look at a hall of famer to me, you think, wow, I got to watch his matches. I don't think I've ever felt in my life, man. Booker T's coming up next. I ain't going anywhere. Right. I don't know that I've ever felt that way. That's why he doesn't deserve the Hall of Fame. Not right now. But maybe somewhere down the road? Yeah, this is too soon because he's too fresh on TV every week. Yeah, it's kind of one of those, you know when a guy gets in the Hall of Fame, but, you know, the sabermetrics proves he gets into the Hall of Fame like 20 years later? That's kind of where Booker T should be. It's still too fresh right now. He needs the wrestling sabermetrics to come out to prove how good he was. Well, I mean, as far <laughs> as you look at, like, number of championships, I think a good equivalent of somebody who's already in the Hall of Fame, and that's an argument you could make for it, Edge. Like but a dozen time tag team champion, world champion on a few occasions. But to me, Edge was absolutely a sentimental induction. Oh, yeah. If yeah, Edge had just a few outs upset with Edge too. Yeah, you take you take the Edge injury away and he just decided to step away from the ring, he's nowhere near the Hall of Fame for ten years. Yeah. Exactly. So the uh, there, I know there's so there's so many different directions. Yeah, to go it, with it this. just it feels weird. It feels like man, we need one more person. Ah, uh, all right, yeah, let's throw Booker T okay, in now. Okay, now, God forbid, let's say now we don't obviously know what goes on inside the outside of Booker T's life. Is there something going on? Is it, my buddy brought this up to me. Is there something going on where it, do we not know that if maybe he's sick and WWE feels bad? Okay, you get the Hall of Fame. Do we not know because he hasn't been on SmackDown that much. Is there something health-wise going on with Booker T? If there is, I haven't heard anything about okay. it. Okay, all right. Yeah, I mean, something that serious I feel like would have made its way then out I somewhere. Okay with it. Then I'd be okay with it. I'd be like, all right, then okay. But other than that, I disagree with it. I I'm with him. It feels very random. Yeah. It does seem kind of a little out of place. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I I'm okay with it. I'm not, you know, I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. I'm not as vehemently against it as, uh, as Dan is. Thanks so much for the call. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and set it up then. Here, uh, so a couple days ago, we uh, we got the chance to talk to uh, to Heath Slater, uh, promoting Raw that's uh, that's coming up this Monday in Philadelphia, and we talked a little bit about his career and uh, had to fight a rather uphill battle of some uh, some technical difficulties to say the least. In fact, uh, because of That's pretty much what Mike Samsel was at the end of the interview. I was flustered. Flustered would flustered. be an understatement. <laughs> you were, yeah, you, you were livid. I, I don't even think I could, I could verbally describe, after doing almost five years of radio now, the level of lividity that you had. Really? It's like a Tuesday for me. I must be hard to work with. No comment. <laughs> Let's go to the interview. Back here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. For Ron Derry, Mike Samsel with you right now. We're a three-man Joining us here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com is the leader of the three-man band, Heath Slater. Heath, what's going on today, my man? Thanks so much for joining us. And I'm doing great, and I am the leader of 3LB, the rock star of WWE, Heath Slater. Get it right, buddy. Man, about 20 seconds in, I'm already drawn, Heath. But I, I guess I understand, because I know it's WrestleMania season. You guys are fired up. You're ready to go. And I know it's the Super Bowl of wrestling coming up. That time, you know, everyone gets excited about It's the Super Bowl, the World Series of wrestling. You know, it's just one of those... Uh, spectacular events that everyone should come and at least watch, you know? We'll turn back the clock uh, a couple of years here going back to, I mean, what was it like being in the main event of uh, SummerSlam 2010 as part of the Nexus? Uh, you know, having, having the, the, you know, that big 
major push as part of that group, uh, and even uh, you know having the I guess ability, for lack of a better term, of pinning uh, a Hall of Famer in Edge and a surefire Hall of Famer in Chris Jericho in that match. Man, honestly, you weren't kept for me to be honest. Uh, it's just one of those things where you know we were young, we were up and coming, and everything, and we wanted to set an impact, and then. Next thing you know, uh, we got that main event spot at SummerSlam with the top dogs of the business, you know, at that time. And we have they even brought in, you know, Bret Hart. Everyone knows about Bret. And, you know, just try to take us down and everything. It's just, it was one of those things, like, everyone even asked me anyway. It's like, uh, you know, what's that one match that you remember, you know, and I'm always bring up SummerSlam 2010. It was just one of those things, you know, at the Staples Center, Atmosphere was great. I just remember the Raw before SummerSlam. The crowd was so anticipated, wanting to see, you know, the WWE superstars take out Nexus that the camera, the hard camera was just shaking. I mean, it was just like one of those uh, moments that you would love to, you know, live back and, you know, and um, go and do it once again. And Heath, one of the things that had to be pretty cool was back when that whole angle first started, when they came to you with the idea of NXT and basically said, hey, we like all you guys. We're going to have you kind of form a, a super group here. That had to be really exciting, just coming out of developmental, and all of a sudden you're going into probably the biggest storyline that they had. We had no clue it was going to happen. Everyone thinks it was planned and prepared and everything, but we had no idea. Like, uh, it was one of those things where like, we didn't know what was going to happen to us on NXT. You know, it was like we were all guinea pigs. They were just saying, oh, yeah, you're going to, you're going to be doing, you know, a race. And the next thing you know, you're doing, you know, um, an obstacle course where you're gladiators fighting with these big, you know, things that look like Q-tips and knocking us off of pedestals. And then they're saying, you know, Oh yeah, you're just gonna have a match tonight, and then you go down there and you have a keg carrying contest. Like we had no idea what was going on at NXT, and everyone thinks that we did, and we honestly did. And then I'm just glad, you know, they uh, had us changing in like laundry rooms and like little closets and stuff for you know as long as NXT lasted. And then for us to get a little payoff of joining Nexus was just, you know, just made up for everything, I guess you could say. So to say the least, you were uh, considerably, considerably surprised at uh, at the various uh, events that were going on. Pretty much as surprised as the audience uh, was. Exactly, you were probably thinking the same thing. Keg carrying contest. What does this have to do with uh, with ability in the ring? Exactly what I was thinking. Keg carrying contest, and then juggling, and then doing a speech on the top. Come on, now I didn't come out here to you know play American Gladiators. It's as if they had, uh, you know, they had Mike Adamley on the staff recently thought, hmm, how can we incorporate American Gladiators into WWE? <laughs> exactly. I think I even saw him there, actually. <laughs> Taking a look uh, throughout your career, I mean, it seemed like for a while you had a, like a strength in numbers thing going on. First going from the Nexus and uh, then to the core and now, uh, now 3MB. Uh, it's almost like your career can be, uh, be, be told by the Beatles song and get by with a little help from my friends, you know? A lot of people keep telling me that the you know, whole one-man band, the whole solo forever, you know, was good, entertaining, and fun. But, you know, it never really impact having, you know, numbers behind you and having guys, you know, on the same page. And then going through that from the core where you have basically the core of the Nexus, you know, <laughs> solo career. And then I have, uh, you know, the 3 on beef, but you the time going out, you know, taking the town red and, you know, just... You know, enjoy a life. I should say, you know, my WWE career hasn't been bad at all yet. WWE superstar Heath Slater joins us here on 1490 WBCB and online WBCB1490.com. Mike Samsel for Ron Terry. Heading up to Raw 1000, you had the program that you worked with a lot of WWE Hall of Famers and legends. And that had to be really cool stepping in the ring with a lot of those guys. And, you know, the Vaders, the, the Psycho Sids. That had to be pretty cool. And it was great. It started off with Vader. It was like my childhood came out of the uh, You know, me watching all these guys on television growing up doing what, you know, they love to do. And now I'm in their shoes watching them come back down to the ring. And me, I was just like a little kid, you know, all happy. Like, oh, my God, am I really doing this? What in the world is going on here? I didn't even think this would be possible. Yeah, it certainly, uh, certainly was a, a lot of uh, a lot of fun. Definitely checking it out, and I'm sure the the, the crowd enjoyed uh, well enjoyed seeing you in there with those guys as much as they uh, did seeing all those different guys you mentioned, Vader and, and Sid and Roddy Piper and whatnot. 
But uh, I, I know we've, we've been looking in the we've been looking a lot in the past here. Let's look a little bit ahead. Coming up on this Monday, the 25th, WWE Monday Night Raw coming to Philadelphia, the Wells Fargo Center, seven o'clock, and of course live on the air on the USA Network at uh, at eight o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Central. Uh, should be it should be a jam packed show to say the least. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. You, you have any idea uh, where you're going to be in all the mix here? Man, honestly, you just you know it is say the least. I mean, it's Monday Night Raw two weeks before Mania. I mean. It's- be exciting. Honestly, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing, but I will be there, guaranteed. But, I mean, you're going to have The Rock, John Cena, CEO Punk, The Undertaker. I mean, every name that you can think of is going to be there, and it's going to be promoting WrestleMania. And, I mean, you're going to, it's going to be ridiculous if you don't get a ticket to go to it if you're a wrestling fan at all. And, I mean, it's just going to be an exciting event. I mean, every Monday night we're all exciting. So certainly with all the big names coming, you know, Triple H, Brock Lesnar, Undertaker, CM Punk, Cena, Rock. I mean, right there, you know, it sells itself. Honestly, it's one of those things where uh, leading up to Mania, you want to be at every event possible. You know, the live events television, like the Monday Night Raws, the Smackdowns, it's just going to be an exciting night, you know, to say the least. Yeah, it's definitely going to be exciting. We're looking forward to it. I know Farhan and I are both going to be in attendance, and Farhan and I are both going to be in attendance at WrestleMania 29, Sunday, April 7th at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, just outside of New York City, and that's going to be a lot of fun as well. I know Farhan and I are going to have an opportunity to head to our first WrestleMania, and it's just, it's going to be a, a very cool experience up at MetLife Stadium, and John Cena and The Rock, the main event at WrestleMania, WWE Championship on the line, that's something we're absolutely excited for, and I know, uh, I'm sure the locker room's got to be as well. Uh, who are you going for, if you don't mind me asking, The Rock and John Cena, who do you think will take it this year? I think for this year, I think John Cena gets his revenge. What about you? I know uh, I know you're excited for it as well, and I know a lot of the guys in the back are as well. Man, honestly, I, yeah. I mean, honestly, I, 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 just, I think I'm going to flip a coin and just say head John Cena tells Rock because <laughs> just, you know, the atmosphere in the back between them two, I mean, they don't even look at each other. They just walk past each other and everything. I mean, I can tell there's a lot, a lot of, you know, anticipating for both of them, like a little bit of, you know, you know, controversy and everything just because of, like, last year's mania. So it's very, very, very exciting to see. And you got CO Punk going to the Undertaker streak. I mean, it's like a death wish, you know, anyway with the Undertaker. I mean, it's just like one of those things where CO Punk is, you know, proclaimed best in the world. And honestly, he has proved that he is one of the best in the world. He's young. He's athletic. You know, he's good at what he does and Undertaker you know you just you never know I mean it's gonna be a surprise I think at the end of that match Undertaker might be 21 it's certainly possible and uh, I'm kind of torn on the main event too Uh, I'm probably thinking Cena will win because I'm rooting for The Rock and the last time uh, uh, Wrestlemania was well in, the, in this area for me in Philly, uh, I went to WrestleMania 15 and uh, I was rooting for The Rock against uh, Austin. Of course, Austin ended up winning. So knowing my luck since I'm rooting for The Rock, he'll probably be uh, 0-2 when I'm uh, live in attendance at WrestleMania rooting for him. I know this room for John Cena. You know, it was counteracting itself. <laughs> we got to wrap things up here on 1490 WBCB. Heath Slater, WWE superstar. Don't forget, we're all this Monday in Philadelphia at the Wells Fargo Center. Tickets still available, ComcastTix.com. And stop by. You never know. Maybe you get to see 3MB as well. No, I'm pretty sure we'll make an appearance. If not, you know, you're going to see it somewhere anyway because we always like to make a, you know, an appearance somewhere. We'll keep an eye out for you at Xfinity Live. Maybe there'll be a little impromptu concert across the street. Hey, you never know. It's happened before. <laughs> Heath Slater, thanks so much for joining us here on 1490 WBCB. It was great. Uh, Man, thanks for having me, man. I'd be okay with that. A little, uh, little pre-raw concert, uh, Xfinity <laughs> Live. That would be fun, that's for sure. Well, for a while, I think when, what was it when Ted DiBiase was injured, he was doing uh, the DiBiase posse tailgates and yeah. things like that. So, I mean, it's certainly not out of the question. No, not at all. And it's, uh, I, I would certainly say that. Uh, I remember Zack Ryder holding all of his impromptu rallies and such, so maybe we'll see something like that. Yeah, you never know what you're going to see. Just like you never know what you're going to hear here on (laughs) Pro Wrestling Weekly. At least for as long as it's around, who knows. All right, we'll take care of uh, our our second bit of business, come back, get some news and notes, and... uh, 
Who knows what else here on Pro Wrestling Weekly on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Probably a very apt time to play this. All commentators heard on WBCB express their own views. Their opinions are not necessarily those of others on WBCB, including the staff and management.